Wonderland Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about the 1933 version of Alice in Wonderland, starring a whole host of people from that era, many big names including people like Cary Grant and even Sterling Holloway who went on to play the Cheshire Cat in Disney's version. In this version he plays the frog, the doorman at the Duchess's house. Very different character and you wouldn't even recognize him except for his voice because like almost all of the people in this movie they all wear giant heads they're all humans wearing masks for people with masklophobia the fear of masks this would be a very horrifying movie in fact I was watching it with two of my cousins and one of them said oh this looks like my nightmares come to life it was pretty funny. And then she left and didn't watch the rest of it with us. <laughs> but for the cousin who stayed with me, we both actually really enjoyed it. it. It wasn't what I would call one of the best versions, but it was imaginative and it was fun and very different. It, was, it had a very Wizard of Oz vibe, except it never went into color. And I think it would have been better if it had, but this was like six years before the Wizard of Oz so I don't think anybody had done that kind of thing yet the only thing that I really didn't like about it actually two things one was the random use of a blackface octopus I don't know what purpose it served it was just there and the other one was when the Queen and Alice played croquet as in the book and all other versions they used flamingos they used live flamingos in this version. I was kind of shocked. That would not go over today. It didn't look like they were hurting them at all, but they were using the flamingo as a croquet mallet. It was one of those things where it's just a different time, different mentality. You just gotta accept it for what it is. Thankfully it didn't last too long, and it didn't look like they were hurting the flamingo, so I guess nothing we can do about it now. Other than that, I liked the movie. It was a fun movie, just very weird, and I like weird movies, so that was fine with me. One interesting thing to note about the movie was how much it jumbled up Alice in Wonderland with Through the Looking Glass. In fact, they started with the opening of Through the Looking Glass, and she went through the looking glass, and then after she'd been in that world for a while, then she went down the rabbit hole in the looking glass world and ended up in Wonderland. It was just, it was different. It was not a way I'd ever seen anyone do it before, but it worked, and I liked having both versions because you don't often see her go through the looking glass. The girl who played Alice did a really good job. She was far older than the character she was playing, which kind of threw me off for a little bit, but I got over it and it was fine. All the other actors were great. There was no nobody that gave a bad performance. It was just hard to see the performances through the masks. The masks are the biggest thing that you'll have to get over if you're going to watch this movie because there are so many recognizable names but you see almost none of their faces. My cousin who watches a lot of movies from that time period told me she found it rather funny that they had all these attractive people and they were covering up their faces with these giant masks. Anyway, I think that's all for today. I'll be back next week with another Wonderland Wednesday. I haven't decided which version I'm doing yet, but my cousin is really interested in watching some more of the early versions with me, so I may try and find one of those. We'll see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.